Everyone knows that college is expensive, but while tuition costs at my school are more inflated than 1923 Reichsmarks, my biggest gripe has to be with the housing I'm given. To make a point, I'm going to describe a day in the life of the average Soviet political dissident living in a gulag, and then describe my own routine. See if you can spot the differences. Vladimir wakes up before the sun rises every morning. Not because he wakes up early, but because the sun is slower to rise than a tribute amputee rhesus monkey is to wash itself. He opens his groggy eyes to an unfinished concrete ceiling, shivering under his blanket which is far too thin for the harsh winter weather. When he eventually warms up enough to sit upright in bed, he is greeted by a Soviet flag and a poster of three old bearded men at the foot of his bed. It's taken so long to get the blood flowing in his body that the sun has already risen outside. Vladimir can tell this without even looking at the window because the curtains are thinner than the toilet paper he's provided. The saint says that these are the only curtains that they could afford, but looking at the commandant's villa, Vladimir has his doubts. More likely, this was the minimum to satisfy whatever regulatory body was disinterestedly dictating his rights. Struggling to shake the sleep and cold from his hunched body, Vladimir pulls the curtains back to reveal yet another gunmetal gray sky. He looks out the window, but what's the point? The view is the same as always. Nondescript concrete buildings as far as his squinted eyes can see, and just over the top of these miserable structures, the tip of a church. Its tall spire might well be inspiring if it were more visible, but as it stands now, it just serves to taunt Vladimir. Here is hope, it seems to say. So close that you may see it, but so infinitely far away that you may never reach it. No matter, Vladimir has more urgent matters to attend to. He opens the window because, even though it's below freezing outside, his room is so small and confined that the odors of the trash he forgot to take out last night have been amplified 10,000 times. While his room vents, Vladimir rushes to the communal bathroom before the other workers have a chance to defecate and urinate on the floor as they usually do. After splashing cold water in his face to wake up, Vladimir has a chance to take in his ghastly visage in the cold blue light. His eyes are bloodshot, themselves burdened with bags larger than the one that contained all his belongings when he first arrived. His runny nose and red ears are a reminder that if he doesn't get thicker sheets soon, he might freeze. Quite honestly, Vladimir would be more in place among the dead than the living, but at this thought, his lips curl into a cruel smile. It's going to take a lot more than that to kill me, he silently smirks before gathering his belongings and trudging back to his room. Closing the window, Vladimir proceeds to dress for the day ahead of him. Without proper winter clothing, he has to make do with what he has. He wears two pairs of pants on top of each other, two shirts, and a coat so large that it makes him look like a small child. As he laces up his muddied boots, he stares into his small mirror. What a miserable sight I must be, he muses, as he grabs his hat and heads out the door. The wind is so strong, in fact, that Vladimir cannot wear his red army cap to shield him from the sun's dull but persistent rays without having it ripped clean off his head and thrown across the courtyard in the blink of an eye. Instead, he has to wear an oversized Ushanka he found laying around. With his head hunched so far into his shoulders that it looks like as if he has no neck, Vladimir slowly trudges out into the courtyard and begins the trek to the mess hall. The wind whips him about, but in his apathy, Vladimir is immune to the pain. After receiving his gruel, Vladimir is unceremoniously evicted from the cafeteria to eat in his room. To save money for the war effort, none was spent on seating. The food is warm sustenance, but it sits like a lead block in his stomach. In an hour or so, his eyelids will droop as if drunk, but no matter, because by then, he'll be outside and the elements will freeze him awake. After finishing his meal and disposing of the bone scraps so that neither the smell nor the rodents and cockroaches invade his room, Vladimir trudges out to go to work. As he heads to his 12-hour workday, Vladimir muses. It could be worse, he thinks. At least I have the newest housing. But then he remembers that the other assignments were built before the war and, as such, had the opulent luxury of functional central heating and a plastered ceiling. They even had light suspended from that ceiling. Class traitors, Vladimir mutters under his breath, remembering his sole wall-mounted light bulb half falling out of its poorly affixed socket. With this, he trudges off into the gray mist knowing that in his 12-hour workday, his only reprieve will come from the two 20-minute lunch breaks for dinner and lunch, respectively. Now, turns out I was lying. That was a description of my dorm. If you replace Vladimir with Jeff, the Soviet terminology with the relevant college terminology, and the war with the big sickie that's been going around, that is an exact description of what I have done and did every single day for the last year. Admittedly, my work is not physical labor, it's just mindless bloatware, but my time is wasted nonetheless. 
As another fun fact, because it took so long to make this video, by the time I actually got around to producing it, I've gotten my housing assignment for next year, and it's somehow worse. I might have lived in a gulag this year, but next year, I'm paying 25000 to live in a medieval oubliette. At least then I'll have an excuse not to upload videos, because there was an internet in the Middle Ages. So yeah, remember to like and sub to make those little numbers go up. After all, that's all I spend every single day trying to do anyway. Check out the socials if you want, and yeah, stay safe out there.